Okay, last time we talked about some um, characteristics that have to be true in order to conclude that shapes are similar. Uh, one is that it has to have the same shape. Um, another is that each corresponding angle has to be congruent, and the side lengths uh, are proportional. So if all three conditions are met, we can say they're similar. Now we're going to take a look at a specific shape, um, uh, triangles, which we've worked with a little bit. And as we know, the three angles of the triangle have to total up to 180 degrees. Um, and Next class, we're going to be working with uh, the tool to measure the angles. Um, so just as a reminder, uh, to use your protractor to measure these angles, we'll go ahead and measure angle B and angle E. And remember that we can say the measure of angle B is, and whatever we measure it to, we'll put here. Or the other way we can say that is we can say the measure of angle A, B, C. Um, or likewise, we can say measure of angle C, A, B. So we can refer it just to the angle we're looking at, um, or we can put it kind of in the middle uh, position, and the thing in the middle is the one that we're going to be measuring. So if you're using our protractors, there's a little handy-dandy device on the bottom that says if you're opening it to the left, you're going to use the upper, and on the right, it's the lower. So you should kind of think um, if this angle that you're measuring is obtuse, meaning that it's over 90 degrees, you should make sure that you're using um, a value that is reasonable for that. And in the middle you have this little uh, dot here that you're going to put on the vertex of the angle that you're measuring. And the other side, the straight edge here, is going to line up with one of the angles. So with here, you notice that I'm trying to measure this obtuse angle here, and my line isn't quite reaching the top. So what you want to do, in addition to your protractor, is get your straight edge and kind of just lengthen it like this so that that line lines up with your protractor. And again, we're reading it from um, right to left, so according to this thing, we're going to use the lower scale. So it's either between, let's see, between 110 and 120, that would be a 115. Slightly over that, we can say that a good estimate of this would be like 117. First is this one, which would be about 63. Okay, So the measure of angle B is about 117 degrees. Right? And we can rotate the angles all over the place. Again, you just want to make sure the angle that you're measuring, you put that a little dot right on that angle, line it up with the straight line here, and then this looks like it's acute. So whichever one that you're using, the top scale or the bottom scale, has to make sense. So if we use the bottom one, this comes out to be about 138 degrees, which doesn't make sense with this little angle. So we go to the top, and we see that there's a 40, there's a 50, midway between is a 45. So that looks like it's about a 41 degree angle. So we can say the measure of angle E is about 41 degrees. Okay. We also could have said the measure of angle DEF was about 41 degrees. Right? So the thing in the middle is the one we're trying to find. Um, now, in order to conclude um, similarity with triangles, we actually have three different theorems that we can um, test. The first, by abbreviation, is the SSS. It applies to the side, side, side. And what you're seeing is just kind of what we did last time. If I have two triangles, then when I look at their corresponding sides and all three sides are proportional, then we can conclude by the side, side, side theorem that these are similar. So these dimensions of ABC are double the dimensions of A prime, B prime, C prime. Therefore, we can say, remember this symbol here means that these are similar. And now we can call it the side, side, side. Okay? Then we can look at the angle, angle. When you have two triangles, and notice that they don't say anything about their sides whatsoever. I see that angle A is 30 and angle B is 100. And then I look over at this triangle. I see that angle D, which corresponds to angle B, is also 100. And angle F has uh, a congruent angle to angle A. Based on this information and the angle-angle theorem, we can conclude that these are, in fact, similar as well. So we didn't know anything about sides, but because these two angles were congruent, and the third angle we know has to be, if these two are 130, this one has to be 50, the sides would have to be proportional as well. Okay? So the angle-angle theorem is just this. All right? And then the third thing we can look at is called the side-angle-side. So now we have two 
um, sets of corresponding sides. We notice that the sides are proportional, and we have one key that we have one congruent angle. So if you look here, angle C is congruent to angle D because they're both 90 degrees. And then we look at the corresponding sides. We have five and two and a half, so it looks like a scale factor of a half that's been applied to these same um, sides on the bottom. Okay? So when two pairs of corresponding sides are proportional and we have a congruent angle, we can conclude that these two triangles are similar according to the side angle side, which is the SAS. The reason we're going to uh, work with this is because we're going to have um, a section called nested triangles, which means that one is inside of the other, and it's going to look like this. You'll be given some information and asked to, f to find some um, missing clues. So with this, I should be seeing two triangles, and if you see a big one, which is triangle ABC, um, what might be helpful for you in the beginning is that you unnest these triangles. So we figured triangle ABC is the big one, and there's another triangle that is actually, if I shade it, you might be able to see this easier. It's a smaller one that we'll call triangle ADE. And what we know is that BC is 18 centimeters and DE is 6 centimeters. And we know that both angle E and angle C are 30 degrees. So if this is 30 degrees, and this is 30 degrees, and then it's not actually labeled, but we're given some information over here, I'm telling you that these two are similar, two triangles are similar, and I'm also telling you that the measure of angle AC, this long one, was 39 degrees. So we can go ahead and label that in our picture. So the more uh, information that you give yourself to work with, the easier it is to see these relationships. So now we're trying to find um, how long AE is, and then uh, EC. So beware, we can ask you either or, uh, and you should be able to answer the question. So according to side angle side, we know that these guys um, are going to be similar. Therefore, we look, we see that it has a congruent angle. We look at the two corresponding sides. I see that 18 is, um, or 6 is a third of 18. So you can kind of look at the scale factor. I'm shrinking it, so I'm multiplying it by a third. So you can do the same thing here. Multiply 39 by a third. Third of 39 would mean that the measure of angle AE is 13 centimeters. Okay? So this entire thing is 13. And you figured to answer EC, if I go back to my original drawing, I can now conclude that angle AE is 13. And we knew that the entire measure of, uh, sorry, side AE, we knew that AC was 39. So how do we figure out just the distance from E to C? Well, that would be 39 minus 13. So that would give us 26 centimeters. Okay? All right. So the first thing you want to do with nested triangles is to unnest them and label everything that you know. That's angles or sides. All right? um, here's another one. We kind of rotated the triangle around. And you're asked to find what the length of uh, x, y is. So what is the measure of x, y? All right. um, if I were to unnest these things, I have the large triangle, which we'll call x, y, z. And then next to it, inside, we have the smaller triangle, which we'll call q, u, z. q, u, z. And this is going to help us uh, see how they're related. Now we want to put some numbers on. We know that QU is 24 feet. We know that UZ is 6 feet. And then we know that from Y to U is 14. Therefore, from Y to Z would be the sum of 14 and 6. So all the way across, this thing is 20 feet. And we're asked to find this. We have three out of the four. So we could set up a proportion, because when I look at this, it's not going to be a whole scale factor coming this way. We could look at it like this. So from here to here is times four. So you figure that could be times four. But let's go ahead and do the proportion. I'm going to say x is to 20. Here's one way we could do that. And if I say x is to 20, I'll have to say 24 is to 6. Okay. And this is a 20. Um, impo only always work. I can impo what's underneath 20. 
multiply both sides. Here I can simplify uh, by halving it, or I can just do 20 times 24 divided by 6 means that, yes, we would have gotten the same thing. X is 80 feet. The other way we knew is we can look at the scale factor like this. That would be times 4. Therefore, X would be times 4.